Hello everyone and welcome back to another late episode of Restore It. There's a lot going on at the moment here in the workshop. Content for Rusty Nut Restorations is coming very soon and a third channel is going to be announced in the new year. I'm excited to get both of these going as well as bringing you frequent videos here on Restore It. We're getting there, slowly but surely. I want to get the touring out of the way so I can fully focus on the Coupe's bodywork series. I'm currently gathering panels so I can keep the videos coming once I get going with it. This week we're carrying on with the 325i touring. What started as just an engine bay cleanup quickly became a full-on front-end restoration. After cutting out the right engine covering plate and the rust from the bottom of the inner arch, I had one more piece of new metal to weld in before I could weld in the new covering plate. That is, if one of the 10 I had ordered ever showed up. After a lot of small welds and grinding, the last piece was firmly in place. The last thing I needed to do was fill in any of the tiny pinholes left by my bad welding and grind them down. The grinder probably got more use than it should have done here, but I'm sure I'll get better in time. Whilst filling the holes, I kept blowing through in one area causing large holes to form. I tried lowering the welder settings and placing copper behind the welds, but I think the metal was just too thin and weak. I ended up making a right mess of it. Before I show you how I sorted this out, I'd just like to thank Autodoc for supporting the channel and sponsoring this episode. Autodoc are one of the leading online car, truck and motorcycle part distributors operating in 26 different countries across Europe. With over 11 years in the game, Autodoc know exactly what you need. They currently have a huge 2.5 million parts in stock, covering more than 540 high quality and low cost brands. And now with their mobile app, available on the Google Play and Apple Store, you can get your hands on the parts you need wherever you are. You could take advantage of their one click order feature whilst browsing their intuitively illustrated catalogue of parts, sorted by helpful filters, making it easy to find what you need. You can now also track your order using the app itself, so you won't be left in the dark about your order and you don't have to rely on third party websites to find out where your stuff is. Treat your car to the new parts it deserves this Christmas by downloading the Autodoc app today using the link at the top of the video description. Thanks again to Autodoc. Let's get back to me learning to weld on camera, shall we? So after a lot of swearing, I decided to cut out a small square and add some fresh metal to see if that could overcome the issue. With that working as well as it did, I made sure all of the holes were filled and cut the bottom of the middle piece to align with the other two. Now, for my first try, I'm actually quite happy with this. I've still got to do a bit of grinding and add some filler before I paint it. And I've also got to weld this piece to my new piece before I add the covering plate. For now, I'll add some UPO weld through, the zinc rich primer to stop it from rusting.
Whilst I carried on waiting for someone on this planet to send me a covering plate, I cracked on with some of the other tasks on the list. These brake line brackets needed replacing from when I broke them last time. I think I need to bend the line a little more to get a better fit. If you remember back to episode 3 of this mini-series, this was the piece I had to practically snap off because of the rusted bumper bolt. I'm going to replace these brackets with some second-hand ones I found on eBay. This nut was so rusted, no socket, spanner or tool in my workshop would spin it off. I resorted to a cutting disc. And it still didn't want to come off. Whilst this thing is so stripped down, I thought I might as well address everything. When I was fighting that bolt off for two days, I gave up trying to be careful with this part a long time before I eventually got it off. I had to repair it with fiberglass reinforced filler and then some UPOL Fantastic filler to finish off. So I was able to replace all of these parts for £40 in total. These are original parts from an E30 in much better condition. To help these new ones not look like these old ones, I'm going to repaint the black parts and re the gold parts just to make sure they last that little bit longer. With the body filler dry, I could sand it down ready for paint. The brackets and nuts and bolts had a quick clean before having the rust and old zinc plating removed on the bench grinder. Another thing on the list of things to do was attach the transmission to the engine ready for installation. This felt like the easiest way to do it without having two cranes. I then added the Torx bolts and torqued them down to spec. I need to install some pipes, the starter and a few other bits before it's ready to be dropped back into the touring once I have the covering plate in. 
another thing I was doing in the background was the lights. The last thing I needed to do was paint the light rims and reassemble them ready to be installed. You can tell I had a good time with some orange paint not too long ago. You'll see why over on Rusty Night Restorations, I think in the first episode on the channel, which is coming soon. With those parts drying under the lamp, I set about re all of the nuts and bolts that came with the brackets. I first dipped them in a dry acid solution before plating them with zinc and adding a gold passivate for extra protection. The only thing left to do on this bumper piece was to swap out these rusty C-clips for some brand new ones. But after doing this, I decided I couldn't help myself but to paint it. With the rings dry, I reassembled both of the headlights. If you want to see this process in greater detail, check out my full headlight restoration video I did a while ago. The only thing untouched on this bumper was the front indicators. I cleaned them up and gave the plastic a fresh coat of texture trim paint. With everything looking brand new, I could put it back together again, ready to go on the car.
Another thing I couldn't ignore were these rust patches on the slam panel. During the full restoration on the touring, I'll replace the whole panel with a new one. For now, I got rid of as much as I could and treated it with a rust converter. I then primed it, ready for paint when the new panel arrives. After searching far and wide for a covering plate, I was told by a BMW employee that the part was on a list, waiting for enough people to show interest so that BMW can buy the tooling to make more of them. I really don't think this is going to happen anytime soon, so another option we discussed was for me to buy a larger section that has the covering plate I need attached to it and cut it off as best I can and use that. This way wastes a lot of money and material, but it might be the only way I can get my hands on a brand new one. Whatever happens, you'll know about it next time when we carry on with the touring. For now, I'm going to finish the workshop with one more episode and get going on the Coupe's Bodywork series. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe with the bell on, and I'll see you next time.